Hello everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, my name's Mandy Chessel um, and I'm the host for this uh, Ask the Expert uh, session. So a little bit of background about me. I've been in the industry um, about, uh, 30, well, well over 30 years. I've worked on a large number of uh, projects, started on mainframe, writing, in, uh, writing code in uh, Assembler. And uh, over the last 30 years, as you know, the industry has changed dramatically. And uh, so um, I've worked on all sorts of uh, different types of technologies. Um, but over the last uh, two and a bit years, I've been working on an open source project called ODP Nigeria, which is all about uh, the integration of the knowledge that uh, tools acquire from your use of them. This is called metadata. Um, and allowing that to be exchanged between different tools so that an organization can be much more coherent because people are sharing the knowledge that they're building. Uh, this came from an idea that um, a lot of regulations were requiring an organization to operate in a very coherent way. And, um, the, uh, and, and, and so we actually started, I've been working with uh, um, other colleagues in IBM, but also with um, uh, customers of IBM who um, see this problem and uh, uh, are wanting to work with us to fix it. So one of the major contributors we have is a large global bank called ING. Um, and we have been collaborating together to build that technology. So um, I'm happy to answer questions on the technology itself, my career, uh, different things I've worked on. Um, it's really up to you uh, what type of questions you're interested in asking. Um, and I believe you can fill the questions in. Um, in the uh, in the application, so you can send me questions. And uh, oh, I got a question. <laughs> Let's have a look. And uh, why did you start working on it? It's a really good question. So why did we start this project on open source? Because it's a very complex piece of software, um, and you could think, well, maybe that could be a product. Um, but the reality is that uh, what this technology is trying to do is to connect tools that come from different vendors different open source projects. And no one is going to integrate, then no one is going to allow a single technical technology company to be the only be the be the sort of centralized point where all this knowledge is, is enabled. So to the, so to make this work, we needed something that was open, fair, um, and we use the Linux Foundation as the uh, sort of the keeper of this technology so that it's a safe place for different vendors to work together to come up with the standards to build the um, you know to build this ecosystem. So uh, it was a big change for me having worked um, in building building software products for a large company for so many years to suddenly start working in open source. But to be fair, I I love it. I absolutely love the open collaboration. And the fact that everything we do is so much better than it would be if we just focused from a single company's perspective. Uh, so that's really why we started. And uh, it's been a, as I say, it's been a, it's been a great journey. So the que next question is who else is involved in the project? So um, we, it's, so the, 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 the two companies that sort of really started it were IBM and the, and ING. Um, but we also have uh, SAS, which is a very large uh, analytics company um, who have a lot of experience with working with data and metadata uh, around um, supporting companies building their, um, their, their analytics uh, capability. So they've been very interested. Um, and they also sort of like the third, um, the third leg of the, of the stool to, uh, uh, to, to come together to do this. Um, then we have um, other companies that are perhaps a bit smaller, but they have very niche requirements around um, integration. So um, one of one of the uh, companies is the Russian Railways, um, and also we have worked with um, companies like Manta, and um, I spoke to a company called Privatel recently, uh, and and so we're seeing. Um, 
we're seeing a, an increased interest around the, the you know the, the the not not just bigger companies but also smaller companies uh, and then there are other much larger companies or household names that are starting to work with us um, but I can't tell you who they are at the moment uh, it's really up to them to do their announcements when they're ready to do that um, so uh, yeah so we have a a very wide range of different people who are consuming it, who work for big companies, who are uh, work for smaller companies and have niche products, uh, as well as people who have to work in a very highly regulated industry and need this type of technology. Okay, so any other questions? Oh, another one coming in. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so okay, while working on the project, are there things you've learned uh, not to do that you can share? Um, I think the most important thing not to do is to keep, is to build something privately until it's perfect, because it won't be perfect. And so um, what we've learned is to share ideas much earlier and to show working prototypes uh, and to get that feedback and you find that there's no, that, that there is no such thing as perfection. Everything is work in progress, really. And really forgetting to use the, the, the community to get something done is uh, is the biggest thing that uh, uh, that we've learned, you know, to make sure that we always that we, we, we don't sort of hide things for uh, until, you know, and then just dump this massive feature without really talking to people about it. So that's that's what we learned not to do. Okay, any other questions or follow-ups to that? Okay, so the question really, the next one is, is about the uh, successes. And um, it's a, <laughs> you think that was an e easy one to do. So uh, we, so there's, there's, there's different levels of success. So one of the things that's been incredibly successful is the actual technology. Uh, because we've built this with so many experts around us, it does things that, um, that are completely unique uh, in that it's able to create this peer-to-peer -peer sharing environment between radically different tools um, through a common language, through an exchange protocol that combines replication of, of metadata as well as federated queries. So that core piece, which is the first bit we did, that is self-configuring and self-managing, uh, was actually quite a major success to prove that we could make that work. Um, and then building on that, as we started to bring metadata together, a whole new raft of possibilities has opened up and that has led to new modules, to new capability and things like that. So one of the major successes has been because we are not a commercial product, we are not tied to a specific market. Um, we go where the problem is. And we've broken down not only the technology silos, but also the thinking silos about what a product in a particular market can do. So that, is, that in itself has been incredibly successful. And then just from the people's point of view in the, in the project, there isn't a day almost that we don't learn something. <laughs> so that is also... Um, in terms of our skills, um, we're, it's like being a startup in that we have to do everything. We have to make the build work. We have to sort the security problems out. We have to get the design right. We have to um, get the ecosystem right. We have to do the advocacy. Every, you know, it's a small, team, small community, and we're doing everything just like a startup. So the, the things we, that we learn are huge. Um, and then we have two 
um, fairly large uh, uses of this um, from a sort of production business point of view. Uh, and that, of course, is really where the total value comes from actually from um, solving problems, real problems um, for real people. Um, and so that's the final level of success, basically, is, is when the technology is, is being useful to somebody. Um, uh, OK, so that was that one. Let's look at the next one. So why from the from my point of view, um, too small amount of vacancies in open source. I'm not sure I'm following it. Why Why are there a small number of vacancies in open source? I'm not sure that there are. Maybe you have to give me a bit more detail. Um, I mean, there's, there's two parts to it. I mean, anybody can contribute to open source. The trick is getting paid for it. Um, and organ there are organizations that, that, that bet their business on open source. And those are the ones, if you want to be paid for doing open source, those are the companies to work for. Um, and, um, and they will value you, your contribution and your skills that are, that are part of that open source process. So I think it's really a question of choosing your company wisely in terms of who you want to work for. Uh, the other thing I also see is larger companies wanting a, an open source project to be enhanced and they may not, for regulatory reasons, be allowed to actually contribute. And then that's an opportunity for uh, software um, companies and consultancy companies who have skills in that project and have maintainers in that project um, can pick up, you know, um, interesting contracts around it. So. Uh, yeah, I think, as I say, there's, there's plenty to do, and I'm sure most communities will um, encourage people to join. But if you have to still earn a living, then it's just really looking at who's using open source and who's actually wanting to be an active member in that, in the, in that, uh, in these in these types of projects. I hope I answered the question. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, so the next question is, um, if people are new to open source and they want to get involved, how can they um, in any project? And I think specifically in our project. So uh, first thing you need permission. So if you work for a company, you need to make sure that they, they're okay with you doing this. Um, even if you're um, doing this in your spare time, you do have to be a little bit careful of uh, conflict of interest. So particularly if you're in a software type business, but presuming you've got permission to do it and you've got the time to do it, uh, then really, as you approach a community, whether it's the um, Nigeria community or, or any other, is think you have to think about how do I get them to trust me? How do I get them to trust me? They've worked very hard on this software, or that whatever whatever is the the product, and um, and I want them to give me right access to all their work. Uh, which is ultimately what you get when you become a committer or a maintainer on a particular project. So the process that every community will document their process for joining in. So just be, being able to, to, you know, to be a part of it, listen, talk to people, uh, contribute ideas. Uh, and then you can also go a bit further and start contributing content to the project. Uh, and again, they will have a series of, um, of, uh, instructions on what you do so for Algeria if you go to our github repository uh, you'll see the um, there's a, a thing called the community guide that tells you how to connect into into our group uh, and then from there there's uh, links to developer guides and um, how to become a, um, a uh, contributor how to become a maintainer and all the different sort of procedures and, and, and processes that you go through. And that's quite normal for an open source project that's under what's called open governance. Um, and that's something that the Linux Foundation does um, very well. There are a lot of open source projects in GitHub, 
that are really only one person maintaining it. And so they you really got to connect with them. And if they want to help you to help them, then they'll let you help them. So you, you need to look at the project in terms of how is it governed. But if it's like a Linux Foundation project, then in the top of the GitHub repository, you will see all the instructions on how to, to connect. Um, all right, so that's that one. The next one is a great question. Is leading an open source project different, easier and harder than leading inside a big company like IBM? So that's both actually. Um, and uh, so inside a company, you have a position and in that position you have, um, in, you have authority. And if you're responsible for building a product and delivering certain set of functions, you have that authority to tell people what to do, uh, to organize the work, uh, and, you know, and um, make sure you've got the right people to there. So you, you have authority, but in an open source project, then people do what they want, right? So they want, they, they invest their time in the thing that's important either to, to whoever's their company or to, um, or to their own personal interest. So what you're doing in terms of leadership is allowing people to do what they want while maintaining the coherency of the whole. So the whole point, the whole purpose around it and the, and the way that you work is much more collaborative. Things you have to, sometimes you have to relax and let things happen in their own time. Uh, sometimes the project goes and does something that you wouldn't have done, <laughs> um, but, but actually is the right thing. So it's, it, it, it's always engage brain before mouth when you're leading in this environment because you can't make anybody do anything. Um, and so that's, it's, it's more about the fact that um, it's, it's a style thing. It does take patience sometimes, but it also um, is the most wonderful thing because you see things happening that, you, d you didn't direct, you didn't think of, but the result is absolutely fantastic. So in that, sometimes I see amazing things happening in the project and I'm thinking, well, this is easy because I didn't do anything about that. I didn't make that happen. I didn't need to because the community did it for me. And, and you know, we've, we have, um, sometimes we have problems you know, like our build machines fall over or we get a problem and, and people just rally around. So in that respect, because it's all willing volunteers, it's easier as long as we we're wanting to move into the same direction, sometimes there's a little bit of negotiation that's required. So um, it probably, I think it's very different. And for some people, the, um, the, they much prefer to have it very clear on what they have to deliver, when they have to deliver it, and what resources they have to deliver it for, which is more like working in a big working inside a company than um, a more collaborative style. Uh, for me personally, I prefer the uh, the, the open source uh, approach. Um, but it's this, the time when it gets um, a little bit difficult is when I need when the when the company I work for for IBM needs the open source project to do something specifically by a certain date, uh, and that that can that can be quite quite uh, quite fun. So um, yeah, so is it is it yes is it easier harder? I just think it's different and uh, different people prefer different styles. Um, so that's hopefully that's a good enough answer. So next question is, what do I love about working in open source? So I think you can probably tell that I do love working in open source. And um, and it's be, all my career, I've worked on the next generation of technology. So I, was, I started on mainframes and I uh, then moved to working on distributed Unix systems and uh, enabling transaction processing software to work on those distributed systems at a time when people believed you needed to run serious business applications on a mainframe and that these um, small distributed systems were really never going to be um, uh, strong enough to run a business on, which of course, is, is, uh, you know, you look back on that and you think, well, that's just ridiculous. Um, and then after that, um, I started working on open standards, um, Corba standards and implementation of that. And again, it was like, well, these open standards won't work. You need proper, you need that, that, um, that the security of a proprietary system. Um, and, uh, so, 
And then I worked um, much more on um, data oriented systems and uh, using metadata to control the use and expansion of data. So each stage of my career has been that next generation beyond the current product today. Uh, and so one of the reasons I like about open source is it allows that stage of development to happen in a very um, effective way. So we iterate, we collaborate, and we can deliver and explore new areas um, in a way that it's very difficult for a product team that have to basically earn, earn, um, earn a living from it. And that's, that to me is, is the way that that releases innovation to me is, is, is the most fantastic thing about open source. Oh, next question. That's a good one. Do you have a lot going on. Any personal tips for work-life balance? Actually, no, I'm looking for them. If anybody's got any good ideas. One of the things I found over the last six months while we've been uh, working from home is how much effort I have to make to make sure I have time for myself. And, uh, uh, and so I have one room where my laptops are. And when I leave those rooms, I am, I've left work, so to speak. Um, but the, the uh, one of the reasons why I find it so difficult to come away is that the whole project is so interesting um, that uh, you know I, I'm, I'm sort of I want to I want to keep working on it. Um, but um, so for me, my um, my leisure time is 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 I love hiking, and uh, so if I can get out into the countryside and um, you know sort of work while the weather's good, uh, that's that's how I. That's how I get. I actually get away. So I think having an interest, having something that allows you to step away from the very deep thinking that's required to work on any of these open source projects. So that's the, that's the trick. But if anybody's got any better ideas, please let me know. <laughs> any other questions? Done them. I don't think I've missed just double checking. I've not missed anything out. I think I've got everybody's questions. Okay, well, I think that's that's the end of the session. So thank you very much, everyone, for your questions, and I hope you enjoyed it. Take care.